The Bible, unlike all major religious texts in the world, contains prophecy. And when we look to the Bible concerning the times just ahead of us right now, we see a major theme. Watch the Middle East. This war-torn area of the world has seen more than its share of strife and suffering. And the Holy Scriptures tell us that it is that land that will provide the stage for the most climactic events in human history, leading up to the return of Jesus Christ Himself. Do the newspaper reports and news magazines of our day back up the Bible's predictions? If you want to see how Bible prophecy makes the news that we see on a daily basis come alive, then stay tuned. Greetings and welcome to Tomorrow's World. You know, the Bible, composed of the Old and New Testaments, is truly unique among the religious writings of the world, not just promising to tell us how God wants us to live our lives and what our conduct should be amongst our fellow man, but telling us details of future history. That's all prophecy is. It's history written in advance. God tells us in the pages of the Bible... Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Yes, God declares the end from the beginning. What He says is going to happen does happen happen without fail every time. In this way, the Bible is unique. In a very real way, this television program is unique as well. For more than half a century, the ministry behind the Tomorrow's World program has been not only proclaiming the earth-shaking truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ about the coming kingdom of God, but also teaching our listeners and viewers about the details of events to come as outlined in your Bible. Details that, frankly, you probably don't hear from the pulpits and other religious programs that you're familiar with. How accurate has the Bible been in predicting the road that we now find ourselves traveling as the world rushes towards its date with destiny and a meeting with its Creator? On today's program, I want to take a look at some of what we've been proclaiming for decades using the inspired prophecies of the Bible and compare them with what we see in today's headlines and news magazines. And you will find, my friends, that nothing brings the news alive and makes current events more fascinating and personally meaningful than knowing the details of what God Almighty has in store. I'll also offer you a free booklet today that will help you to study into these things for yourself so that you can know what lies in store during the years just ahead for you and your family. First, let's consider this incredible fact. Many national powers have strut across the world stage throughout the centuries, and many world conflicts have raged in various corners of the earth. The past century saw two world wars and conflicts galore involving peoples and nations all over the world. However, concerning the end times, the times leading up to the glorious return of Jesus Christ and the establishing of the kingdom of God, where does the Bible point our attention? to a tiny piece of land called Israel. Situated on the east shore of the Mediterranean Sea, this tiny piece of real estate, and in particular the city of Jerusalem, is promised by God in His Word to be the center of focus for all nations during the days leading up to the return of Christ. Let's consider just one verse of the many that we could examine in this regard. If you have your Bible handy, turn to Zechariah chapter 12, And verse 2, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. 
all who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. God says here and in numerous places that in the last days, Jerusalem shall be a burden that the world will be unable to ease and that he will gather all nations against it. Now, does that make sense? That the attention of the entire world and every nation of man will be focused on a small piece of land about the size of the American state of New Jersey. It's a bold proposition and one that we have put forward in this work for decades. Do the facts bear that proposition out? Consider this comment from former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, made at the end of his term of service. Addressing issues of global peace and security, he said, we may wish to think of the Arab-Israeli conflict as just one regional conflict amongst many. It is not. No other conflict carries such a powerful symbolic and emotional charge among people far removed from the battlefield. The tensions that continue to convulse the Middle East stubbornly will not go away, though many have tried to resolve them. The Bible tells us that this tiny piece of land will be the center stage of world events immediately preceding the return of Jesus Christ. And we see world leaders such as Kofi Annan and others recognizing the fact that the world will not find peace until the problem of Jerusalem is resolved. Well, if Israel and Jerusalem are center stage in the last days, who are the actors God says will occupy that stage? Let's summarize the end time scenario that God lays out for us in His Word. What we will see in the Middle East shortly before the return of the Messiah is this. Many prophecies of the Bible combine to give us the details of the end time scenario. In the picture they paint, we see that a dominating major economic and military power called by Daniel, the king of the north, will power through the Middle East it will be confronted by another rival power identified by Daniel as the king of the south, a power with which it may have previously had a brief agreement. The king of the north will press against the king of the south, enter its territory conquering and pillaging until it is troubled by news it hears of incredibly massive armies collecting to the north and east on the other side of the Euphrates in what is currently called Iraq. Eventually, the river Euphrates is miraculously dried up, allowing these two powers, the king of the north and the massive force from the east, to meet at the hill of Megiddo, at what is called in Hebrew, Armageddon, and gather there for what God calls in Revelation 16 and verse 14, the battle of that great day of God Almighty. These powers unleashed by these armies in these times is prophesied to kill billions. Yet that time shall be cut short by the return in power and majesty of Jesus Christ to rule this world and usher in the glorious kingdom of God. The ministry behind Tomorrow's World has been proclaiming the Bible's outline of this very end time scenario for more than half a century. How are those predictions holding up? Who are these great end time powers? What crucial pieces of this prophecy does God Almighty already have in place and what pieces yet remain? We'll address those questions in the next part of our program. But first, let me offer you a free booklet that will go into more detail about the Bible's prophecies than I can in today's program. It's called The Middle East in Prophecy. Far from being some far-off area of the world that has nothing to do with you and your family, what happens in the next few years in the nation of Israel and the Middle East will affect you and your family directly and personally in ways you may not now be able to imagine. Please pick up the phone and call the number on your screen or write to us and request your free copy. And please know it really is free. No one is going to call you or solicit you. 
Our materials are offered as a public service and are already paid for by volunteers from all over the world who believe in the message of this program, who want to support the work of Almighty God, and who are passionate about getting this information into as many hands as possible. There really is no obligation. Call for your copy of the Middle East in Prophecy today. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number once again is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Welcome back. Before the break, we summarize the end time scenario in the Middle East as it would look right before the return of Jesus Christ. We saw three major world powers interacting, two called by the Bible, the King of the North and the King of the South, and the third, a massive army from the East. Who are these powers? And do we see any evidence of their existence today? The massive forces from the east are quick to identify. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 16 describes the armies from that area that march over the dried Euphrates as being 200 million strong. There are very few nations in the world that could muster such an army. Of them, there are two candidates, China and India, both of which lie east of Israel. These two nations together contain more than one-third of the entire population of the world, one in three human beings on earth, and they will be large contributors to that ultimate horde from the east, as will other key nations. But what of the identity of the king of the north and the king of the south? Can they be identified? First, let's consider the king of the north. This terrifying economic and military titan is described in many places in the Bible and is called by many names, but it is more commonly known to students of prophecy as the mighty beast of Revelation. Bible prophecy gives us a great deal of insight into the nature of this dominating future empire. For instance, in Daniel 2, we read how the prophet Daniel was given a vision of a great image picturing four empires that would dominate much of the Mediterranean world up to the return of Jesus Christ. The fourth world empire pictured by the legs of iron is the Roman Empire and its various revivals throughout history, such as the reigns of Charlemagne, Napoleon, and Mussolini. The feet of this image are made of iron and clay and are smashed in Daniel's vision by the coming kingdom of God. Those feet picture the final end-time revival of the Roman Empire. As we are told about these feet in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 41, Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mix with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. This end time power will be partly strong and partly fragile because its component parts do not naturally adhere together, just as iron and clay do not stick together. Yet God tells us that a unifying element will be found, 
to bind these very different nations together. And that element will be a common religion. Notice in Revelation 17, we see that the beast, that is the revived Roman Empire in Europe, is being ridden by a woman, which symbolizes a church or religious organization. As we have consistently told our viewers and listeners for the past half a century, the beginning of this revived Roman Empire, a mixture of iron and clay, is taking shape in the current European Union, or EU. Recent headlines have discussed the difficulties the leaders of the EU have experienced trying to convince its member countries to accept a binding European constitution. And as the Wall Street Journal reported on April 12, 2007, Europe is in a struggle to define the continent's very identity. The article states that the European Union is deeply uncertain about what binds the bloc together beyond mere economic self-interest. What of the king of the south who resists the king of the north and then suffers the consequences? Some biblical commentators have recently tried to identify the king of the south with Iran. And given the news these days, I can sympathize with that desire. However, we must avoid looking at the world today and trying to read it into the Bible. This is a mistake. For example, during the days leading up to the first Gulf War, how many people said that Saddam Hussein was the beast of revelation? And yet, now that he's executed, how many are willing to admit that they were wrong? We do not read current events into the Bible. We let the Bible tell us what to expect of current events. Look at our map again. In biblical prophecy, compass directions are determined from the vantage point of Israel and Jerusalem. And any schoolchild with a map can determine that Iran is east of Israel, not south. So as powerful as Iran may be becoming in the region, we can say that it is clearly not the prophesied king of the south. But then who is? A passage of the Psalms gives us a clue. Turn to Psalm 83, and I do hope you have your Bible with you today as we go through these verses. Turn to Psalm 83, and let's start in verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gebal, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. These are ancient names for Arabic nations. Bible prophecy indicates the future existence of a confederacy of Arab nations that will oppose Israel, even teaming up for a brief time with Assyria or Germany and the EU before becoming at odds as indicated in verse 8. Interestingly, while Iran is not the king of the south, the rise of Iran in power and influence in the region may be spurring the very creation of the confederacy that will become the king of the south. Let me explain. Not everyone realizes that while Iran is an Islamic nation, it is not an Arabic nation. Iran represents Persia and is not counted among the Arabic nations as one of them. Iran practices Islam in the Shiite tradition, while the Arabic world generally practices Islam after the Sunni tradition. And as the horrible conflict in Iraq continues to demonstrate, there is deep and powerful animosity between these two traditions. And it is this animosity, coupled with the rise of Iran, that may act as a catalyst for the creation of the King of the South Confederacy of Arab nations. Consider these recent news reports. 
The Wall Street Journal published an analysis on January 9, 2007, noting that the nations of the Middle East are being forced into two rival camps. On one side is a Shiite-led arc running from Iran through central Iraq, through Syria and into Lebanon. On the other side lie American allies Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Egypt, along with Persian Gulf states such as Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. These Sunni regimes are horrified at the emerging, increasingly radicalized Shiite bloc, largely financed and inspired by Iran, Arab diplomats say. Notice the nations that are being described as opposing Iran and look again at our map. Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, all Sunni regimes south of Israel. A later Wall Street Journal article published on February 26, 2007, noted that the Middle East is becoming realigned. And that there is, quote, a drawing together of Sunni-led Arab countries against Iran. The article goes on to say, and I quote, that Iran now rivals and sometimes even eclipses Israel as an object of loathing. The king of the south is going to form And we can read about the ripening conditions for prophetic fulfillment in our own daily newspapers. Again, let me ask you to consider requesting our free booklet, The Middle East in Prophecy. One quarter of your Bible is prophecy, and God meant for it to be understood, not ignored. If you call our number or go online to tomorrowsworld.org and order this booklet, no one will call you against your wishes. And we adamantly will not ask you for money. God provides us with the money. We simply know that time is short, and we want this information broadly and publicly available. Request your copy today. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number once again is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles, and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Friends, there is so much more to discuss that we simply don't have time for. For instance, in Daniel 11, 43-44, we read that the king of the north shall stretch out his hand against the countries, the king of the south, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. Until recently, this gold and silver in Egypt might have been a bit of a mystery. Well, as if right on schedule on March 25th of this year, The Middle East Times reported that a massive deposit of gold and other minerals had been discovered in, say it with me, Egypt. The find is so massive that simply mining it may add up to 10 and one half billion U.S. dollars per year into the Egyptian economy. Friends, God knows what he's talking about. Only God is able to declare the end from the beginning and able to make it come to pass. And He is doing just that in these end times. The headlines of your newspaper declared that end time scenario in the Middle East is coming together exactly as God said it would. Frankly, the details of Bible prophecy demonstrate that preachers who say that Christ could come tonight don't have any idea what they're talking about. And of course, no one is promised another day. And while you or I may personally die 
and wake up to face our Creator in the future resurrection at any moment. The fact is that Christ simply is not returning to this earth tonight. There are still prophecies that must be fulfilled first before He returns. Yet we can't afford to become spiritually lazy. On the contrary, these prophecies are being fulfilled before our very eyes. And it is God, not the crafty, scheming governments of man, who controls the pace of these events. If you are being called by God and your mind is being open to His purpose, His plan, and His way, as I know many of you are out there watching this program, and you are responding to that call, then the terrible time that will be unleashed by these three powers soon to emerge on the world scene is not a reason to despair. Quite the contrary. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 24 where God speaks of a time after all of this conflict, a time when Jesus Christ will be ruling the world with His saints in the kingdom of God. Look what it says of the ultimate state of these end-time adversaries. In that day, Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Eternal of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Here we have nations of the king of the south and the king of the north alongside Israel, loved and praised by an affectionate God. What a beautiful and inspiring contrast to the time pictured right before the return of Christ. And what a privilege the saints of God will have to work alongside the glorified Jesus Christ to make the world such a place in the magnificent and soon coming kingdom of God. Please don't forget to request the free literature we've offered today, The Middle East in Prophecy. And tune in every week at this same time and channel where Mr. Roderick Meredith and Mr. Richard Ames will continue to teach you the life-changing truth of tomorrow's world. See you right here next week. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number once again is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.